Hello, it's Duncan. Now that we're getting closer to be able to migrate our stock list from a flat file to Postgres, the Gilderose dev team has entered negotiations with the operations department to see how to connect to their infrastructure. They want to make sure the database connection details are secure, so maybe we shouldn't be storing the password in our code. Instead, we'd like to be able to read the password as well as the location of the database server from an environment variable. This sort of thing can be tedious, but luckily HTTP 4K has already done some of the work for us, so today we'll learn how to use its environments to provide defaults and override them. And stay tuned at the end to see how we can use Gradle providers to configure our builds in the same way. We left our database experiments with all of our database configuration really wrapped up in this PG simple data source. So we configure it with our gilded rows and the database name and so on. I'd like to pull at least some of that out into the environment so that we can have a different password in production. And the first step I'm going to take there is to use not the Postgres simple data source, but Hikari, which is a connection pool. And it turns out we do in fact already import it in our build.gradle. I must have pasted that in from somewhere on the internet. So if we go back to here, we can say Hikari data source, and that takes some different configuration. I think it has a username and password, and the database name and port numbers will be part of the database URL. So that's JDBC URL. And a little bit of experimentation will show that we need to say, this is JDBC, it's Postgres QL. We're on localhost and the port is that 5433 there. And the database is the Gilded Rose from down below. If we're right, we can get rid of those and then run these tests and we can still connect, which is good. So now we've got a string that we could change in order to change the host name and the port. And we've got a password we can change. Let's create a data class to represent those things. So we'll say data class db config, and that's going to have val for the JDBC URL. In fact, let's copy these here. And I'm going to make this a URI so that we know it compiles properly. I'm going to make this a string and this a string and import that. And now we can create a test one of those. And helpfully, we've got these down here we can use. So I'll put those in there and I need to wrap that one in uri.create. If I do that, then I can put in here, this is my test db config URL and we'll go back to getting the string out of that. This is testdbconfig.username, and this is password. Check I've messed it up, and I haven't yet. And now we can make this thing into a function, and we'll call this to Hikari data source. And it looks like, in fact, IntelliJ has messed that up because it should say return that. That would be like that. Now we can pull this thing as a parameter like that, make that into our receiver. And now we have an extension function that can turn our DB config to a data source. Just make that the single expression it wants to be. And then I think we can inline that in there and run. Good. But now in order to get to production, we're gonna have to configure this differently. And in particular, we probably want to bring our password in from the environment in some sort of way. Now we're using HTTP 4K and that has an environment abstraction. So let's try using that. First of all, we had to add the jar file to our Gradle. It's part of our server side stuff. So I think we'll do it in here. So that's HTTP 4K. And I think it's cloud hyphen native. Let's find out by importing. Well, it seems to be happy. And then the documentation shows that we can build an environment which is chained. So in this case, it looks in the JVM flags, followed by the system, followed by environment variables, followed by code and so on. So let's take something like this and put it into our test with a little importing. Hmm, that's not importing uh, back here, cloud native. Don't know why Gradle tell us they had a problem. Go back over here. Now we can import an environment. Good. 
Okay, now I'm not going to look inside the jar file and I'm not going to look in the environment, but I could look in these key value pairs. So I think I'm going to populate that with, say, our JDBC URL here. So we'll put that in there and then we'll say that this is jdbc.url and we'll get rid of that one. And then we don't have those. Now, once we have an environment, how do we get things out of it? We're going back to the documentation. This says we create a lens, and then we use the lens to extract from the environment. So let's copy something like this one. I'm going to paste that in here, and this we're going to call JDBC lens. Let's ignore that for now. And this is going to be an environment key. We're going to map a string into URI create. It's not a multi thing, but it is required and it is going to come from jdbc.url. And if we're right, we can use that jdbc lens to extract a URI here. So that's jdbc lens on our what we've called consolidated bad name. It might compile. Run and find out. Well, that's lovely. So now I think we can go and say that this is just the environment. We can inline that. We can inline that. And we can call this one test environment. And now let's add the rest of our configuration. So we're going to say we have db.password to rows. And we're going to have db.username to gilded. And then down here, let's inline that. Losing for some reason the invoke. Environment back in there. And then let's duplicate that. This will be db.username. And that's not going to be all right. That's just going to be a string. And I think we can say non empty string. And then another one for our db password. Take those out. Add in the names of our corner arguments. And run again. And I just need to add in the comma there to pass the tests. Now, again, extract a function of this. Don't know quite what to call this one yet. We'll call it that. And now we're going to extract the environment of the parameter, make it into the receiver. And now we can see this should be called to EB config and run again. Right here. So now we have a way of composing environments, extracting a DB config from an environment, and then a data source from our DB config. So some of this is production code, and I think that's this and this and our DB config. So let's take those and then cut them out of here. Go off to our main source tree and I think we could have a new package which is config. Inside there we'll have a new file of on figuring. Add that to git, paste in our code and then over here we just have to fix the import. Is that right? Run it, find out. Good. And now in here I think we can say we can inline that as well. So this is a test environment, but we've already named that. So I think maybe we could just inline that one. This is test. Good. I just want to look at some of the principles involved here. First is we could skip this DB config altogether. So we could just have environment to Hikari data source. But I think this class is useful because it communicates what of all the possible things that could be in an environment are actually required in order to create a data source. We should also try and make sure that any misconfiguration fails as quickly as possible so their app doesn't start up. These lenses just throw an exception if they can't work, but we'd also like to test our data sources working before we go any further in our app. And we could in fact do that in here with a validate. Validate will check that we can actually connect to the database. So if we go in here and connect to a port that's not connected to anything and run, the validate will make the test fail. 
And I don't like that much because I don't like something here which should be a simple calculation going off and doing an action. So I'm trying to take that out of there, but move it into here and apply validate so we fail as soon as possible. Like that. And then succeed if we go back to 5433. Good. Returning to our DB config, we could have given it a constructor that took an environment, and we could have made this to carry data source a method. Why didn't we? Well, I suppose it's a sort of nod to the fact this really is just data, and that in this app we might want different data sources, and we might want to create a DB config from a different configuration. Now it's all moot because they're all in the same file at the moment, but extension functions communicate the separation, at least in our minds, between the way that a DB config is populated and used compared to methods and constructors. Okay, back to our configuration. We've seen what happens if we configure things badly. What happens if we don't configure something at all? Let's comment out the username and run. And you can see here we get exception initializer, and this is an lens failure saying that we don't have a db username. We can use that now to see that this environment env works by going to our Duke items test, edit the configuration, and now we'll add an environment variable for db underscore username, giving it our gilded. And if we say OK to that and run, You can see this is now found in the environment, even though we didn't specify it here. So that's the way we're going to be able to use a different password in production, because we'll specify the password in the environment rather than in our code. And you can see the environment overrides our code version. OK, take that and revert our configuration. By the way, note that the separator and the capitalization, db underscore username, is not the same as db dot username in here. And that's the thing that HTTP4K does for us, so that we can have things that look like environment variables in our environment, and things that look like properties elsewhere. OK, take that back, apply that, run that, and we're back in action. I think that's a good place to check in with configure Yukari data source with HTTP4K environments. Good. Thinking about configuration, there's another major thing we have to do before we can start connecting to a database in our production environment, and that's to initialize the database there. Now we know Flyway will initialize the database for us, but how can we use Flyway to do that in production? One answer to that is to use the Gradle build to do it for us. So let's have a look at our build, and remember that we have Flyway configured here to talk to our test database when we're running unit tests against. We also have some duplication here between Flyway and Gook, because they both need to talk to the same database, so let's first of all remove that duplication. This is the Gradle DSL, so I'm not sure we've got very good refactoring tools. And we'll do it by hand. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take those three things, go to the top, and this X is a place to put variables that, that can be referenced elsewhere in the build. So if we paste in there and say x.jdbc URL and x.database username and x database password and use them in Flyway. I think if I go down here and paste, now we need to put these in double quotes and I think it's dollar and then the thing that comes from X. Let's try running that task, see if we're right. That was dot slash Gradle W Flyway migrate. Well, that succeeds, which is a good start. And then we can use the same things in here for the configuration of Duke. So the URL is that, the user is that, and the password that. And if we're right, then we should be able to do Gradle W clean build, and that will regenerate Duke. OK, so far so good. But now we'd like to be able to get the password and probably this JDBC URL from the environment outside the build up Gradle. How do we do that? Well, it took a little bit of working out, but let's go back to our Gradle file. And here, where we initialize things, we can also go and fetch an environment variable. So we can say providers.environment variable, it does complete. 
we said the name of the environment variable we want to fetch from. So I think maybe DB URL. And then the type of that has an or else on it. So we say or else that thing. And then that's a sort of optional thing. So we need to call get on all of that. How will we know whether that works? Well, at the moment, our dev database is uninitialized because we've never run the flyway migration on it. So an empty schema. But if we were to go to the command line, we can say db url equals something like this, but with 5432, which is the port that our dev server is running on. And then we say dot slash gradle w flyway migrate. And we run that. And looking at our dev server, you can see that we've populated our items and we now have a flyway schema history. So now if we can point to our production server with a command line like this, we can use our Gradle file to populate or migrate our production database. Well, we remember, I think we might as well do the same job on our database username and our database password. And run the command line to check that we haven't broken anything. Good. And we'll check that in with configure Gradle flyway migration for use in production. Phew. Just before we finish, I realized that we're actually using different names here. This is JDBC URL and this is DB URL. I think we might as well bring them into line with each other. So let's just change that one to JDBC URL. As I say, in the HTTP 4K environment code means that db.username will match db underscore username. So we can use the same environment variable names, both in our build and in configuring our server. So I'll commit that as an amend. And I think I'm all configured out. It's quite exhausting. So I think we'll call that the end of this episode. We're now in a position to both provision our production server and connect to it from our software. The so next episode, we can begin the migration from our tab separated file to the database. If you'd like to see that episode, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you're enjoying this, I think you'll enjoy the book that I opened that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook. Details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.